Welcome back to the program. A major escalation today in a diplomatic row between France and Italy. France today recalled its ambassador in Rome after what Paris described as repeated baseless attacks from Italian political leaders. In a statement, the Foreign Ministry of France said for several months, France has been the subject of repeated accusations, unfounded attacks and outrageous declarations. This is unprecedented since the end of the war. To have disagreements is one thing. To exploit the relationship for electoral purposes is another another. So how did we get to this point right now? Here's some background. It's been a tough few months for France's Emmanuel Macron. His leadership under scrutiny as Yellow Vest protesters continue their campaign against the president. And if Mr. Macron was hoping for some neighborly support from Italy, he'll be sorely disappointed. His relationship with this man, Italy's Deputy Prime Minister Luigi Di Maio, deteriorated further this week as the Italian leader visited Paris to meet Yellow Vest leaders. Praising the anti-Macron movement, he took to social media saying, the winds of change have crossed the Alps. It's fair to say the French were not impressed. The foreign ministry releasing a statement saying, this new provocation is unacceptable between neighboring countries and partners at the heart of the EU. Whatever happened to love thy neighbor? And here with me to discuss this, so we have Ignacio Corral. He's an Italian MEP from the Five Star Movement. Ignacio. And we also have your news correspondent uh, still with us, Grégoire Lory. And back with me, Darren McCaffrey, our political editor. All right, you know, this is, this is the, of seeing the Italian politicians. You were there, you said, in the picture yes, with the LMS the protesters. Picture. But just to add more background to this, this also started when um, Italy accused France of keeping Africa, African countries poor and yeah. therefore pushing Africans to come to Europe. And this is because they're using the CFA franc. So this is a currency that's backed by France from you know, pre-independence time, just to put that background out there. Is, um, is Italy overstepping the line here? I will ask you, you were there meeting Yellow Vest protesters. <laughs> yeah. Why? Just... And are you not in, you know, interfering here? No, absolutely not. What I think now is that Macron is just a little overreacting because Luigi Di Maio was not at that meeting as um, deputy prime minister, or as a minister. He was there as a political chief of the Five Star Movement and we were meeting a group of the Gilets Jaunes, the R I see that are preparing a list for the European election. So it's a political meeting that a leader of a political movement, as the Five Stars Movement, has all the rights to do. We have no intentions of, interfe of interfering with the internal affairs of France, as we don't want to interfere with the internal affairs of any country of Europe and of the world. The problem with Macron probably was started when he used, used the Italian election and the Italian government to mm. start his European, European campaign and many times he attacked the new government. So I think it's normal so to have... So you think France is playing politics? I don't, I don't of, know. of course Gregoire, he's playing politics. Do you think he's politics. playing politics here? I think it... Or overreacting. Well, I mean, what is it? I don't think... It's a little um, touch. Macron <laughs> overreacted. I mean, if you look at what uh, Matteo Salvini, the interior minister, said that Macron was a very bad uh, president, I don't know who start first. I mean, we're getting into a nasty situation and... Uh, it's something we've never seen before between France and Italy for, for decades. So it is, it is worrying. It is the launch of the European campaign. And sure. uh, that's, I think it, France had to do this sort of, this diplomatic step. But isn't, isn't there an element of theatrics there, you think? Because using the words, this is the worst attack since World War II. I mean, that's a bit uh, much, no? So yeah, it may well be a bit much. Uh, but I agree with that uh, sentiment. But, you know, it, uh, the, this is an ongoing spat. Sure. It is clearly getting quite serious. People are getting very heated and emotional about it all. But I would come back to, I mean, it is interfering in yeah, domestic French politics. <laughs> I, don't, I don't understand how you can say it's not interfering. It's not interfering because they're preparing a list of, of, for the European election. So you would we're welcome, you'd welcome Emmanuel Macron as leader of En Marche going to Italy and, me, going, and talking to your political opponents. Let me ask you something. If Macron talks with Renzi and he does talk with Renzi, is he interfering in Italian domestic affairs? Is that is okay he, with you? If he does, for us, it's okay. Opposition. It's 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 political. It's political. It's politics. It's a European politics. Yeah, but, and but, but, Macron but, can yeah, have his yellow, agreement with Renzi. But, but, it's okay. But Matteo Renzi is not going around smashing up front windows, it's or not, shop windows, and being no, anti but Macron. It's not like, like that. all the gilets jaunes are smashing windows. This is something. This is something not correct. Well, they and were, we were speak, vests. Yeah, there are some of them. We're not speaking with the violent part. We want to speak with the moderate part. We want to create a list and give an answer for. 
for the demands that come but, from the French okay, people. We do, love French okay, people. Do, they are our cousins. And we don't want to have problems with the Yellow Vest protesters are anti-Macron. Yes, and Renzi is an anti star yeah, yeah, movement. Yeah, it's politics, so it's normal. If he speaks with our opponents in Italy, we speak with their opponents, but it's European politics. So, Here we all work together, and we do want to work together, France, to have a better Europe. But, this but, is, but you okay. have to accept that some of the language involved, on both sides, but on the both language... Sides. But, but, yeah, but just because uh, you can accuse Macron of using, or some French politicians of using provocative language, doesn't mean that you then turn around and use the same language to attack them. The language on both sides has not... It, for cousins, as you just said, mm. it's not nice, is it? <laughs> All right. Cousins nice. fight. For, for, the choice, fight for the choice of words, I'd like to ask you, why did they choose those words, comparing it to World War II? I mean, I, again, I go back to my question, isn't that a bit too much? It's a bit too much. So what indeed. is that? Is, is it a game? Okay. I think it's a heat re heated reaction, as you, as you mentioned. It's a bit too much, but maybe it's me in... Ma, uh, Emmanuel Macron's idea to, to show his stand in the European campaign. I mean, he is going to campaign from the liberal side against the illiberal. So for him, it's a way to divide a bit more the um, political landscape mm. between what he thinks uh, is the good side and the, the opposite side. You're saying liberal. liberal and no, no, illiberal. But I think there, this but... is the interesting point, is that this is not necessarily a ride between France and Italy. Sure. Uh, though you know, there is ongoing tensions, um, and there has been, but this is fundamentally a row about a, someone who views themselves as a European liberal leader sure. against what he views as so the which growing brings us, of populism. Which brings us to the but theme of the I... election. I mean, is, is this the kind of campaigning we're going to be seeing? Yeah, this is just so you Europe is? European campaigning. And, and what and I... He's clearly enjoying it. <laughs> no, but, so what I, but what I say is, I mean, it's strange that we have to go and speak with the Yellow West, with the Gilets Jaunes, that they are a very, very big movement asking for things that don't work in France. So they're asking their president, Macron, to find a solution. And he doesn't speak with his people. And we have to, find, we have to so, try and find a solution kind of, together with them. That is interfering, because you're talking to them about what they want from their own about, government. No, about the European visions that we can... Can, if we can work together for a better Europe, for a different Europe. Of course, they don't agree with the Europe that Macron has in mind, so that's the point. Do you think it's going to get dirty? I mean, Darren. Um, was... I think it will, because, you know, what, uh, what raises tensions and rhetoric and language and emotion uh, more than an election, and mm. we've got an election coming up, and as I said, this is a reflection um, of the battles that we're going to see play out, not just between France and Italy, yeah, uh, but in sure. different countries. But the lines are clear. Different I think. regions across Europe over the next couple of months. All right.